G'day YouTubers, Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia here. In today's video we show you how to put in the walls and the ceiling in your van using plywood timbers. Now that the cladding is finished, we start to uh, line the interior of the van. We're going to line with ply, 10mm um, ply, and that will be glued and screwed. Uh, directly into the frame with insulation behind it. As we go we're going to insulate so in this wall cavity which is only uh, 40 mils deep we'll place insulation. In the corner channels here we're going to place flat foil insulation because all the wiring runs through this section up the top and you can't put loose or fluffy insulation behind that. Now we've put the cladding on uh, that's been glued in place there. We've done that right round the van, so all around. Um, the aim of that is to give some backing and somewhere to screw the interior lining on which we're about to commence. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more rigid, takes the, the belly out of the uh, plywood. Um, and when you go to attach the coving and things, you need to put pressure in that point. And uh, without that there, it, you, you get flex in the plywood, so that we don't want that. Greg's just fitting the Dacron insulation here, so it just basically squeezes in between the frame. Um, we use a bit of tape to hold it in place if we need to, but it, we just squeeze it into the frame, then we stick a flex and put the board on top. So these boards usually have a good and a bad side. This is the bad side. You can see it's full of knots and things. On this other side there's a lot less knots so always check your dress face and make sure you've got the tidiest one because when we put the vinyl on we have to go through and fill all, a lot of these holes and things and little marks so make it easy for yourself and pick the best side when you're putting it in. When we put these in we allow about an extra 20 mils over the end because when we do the angled corners they come in here and we glue and nail those or screw them in you need a little bit extra to get the uh, get the fasteners in there so allow a little bit extra on every corner so that when the angle comes in you've got something to screw into place a little mark on the floor before you put the uh, sheet in on the bottom and the top so you know where that where you're fixing into this steel strut here so always make a mark so you can line them up on the centre of the sheet otherwise it's growing blind now across the bottom here we've got that timber so it's pretty hard to miss but sometimes the steel on the edges it's alright because you know it's just about 20 mils in as always these G clamps are invaluable as an extra set of hands just to hold things in place while you're drilling and marking so Greg's just going to do a straight line from those marks we put on the floor just so he knows he's got a centre line to drill into. So we're using these metal SDS countersunk screws. Um, they're a self-driving self screw. They'll go through the steel and uh, they'll countersink in nice and flat so you can fill the head with the um, with the bog filler and get a nice flat finish to put whatever you're going to put on there whether it's vinyl or metal sheet or uh, decorative timber veneer or whatever just make sure you get the best finish you can um, so countersink all of those screws you don't want a big um, metal screw sticking out comes to installing these small sections over the windows and things there's not really anywhere to screw because if you screw through you'll come into the window cavity behind it you can see there you don't want screws protruding here because this is where your window has to go so we basically just glue those in positions with Sikaflex so this whole timber section is only glued in on the rear window here we have the same problem so these are just glued in and then the corner goes over the top the corner that goes over this actually holds it in position. Once that's vinyl, there's actually a trim goes over here so that further secures it. You could put a, uh, a rivet through there if you wanted, 
uh, but the sicker flex will hold anything. So in these corners where there's going to be electrical conduit and things going up and down, we're not allowed to use fluffy insulation. So we dab on a bit of silicon and we can silicon in these uh, this air cell insulation. We've got the 45 corners that we have to cut in the corner of the van. So the same applies for these corners as the roof corners. All these 45 corners. We cut these boards on a 45 degree angle on both sides. From here to here should be 340, so 340 mil. That will give you a nice 45 degree corner on every car park that you do. As you install the uh, panelling and things in these 45 corners, we run all the electrical through the 45 corners. So you've got to make allowance like this. Uh, this is a pull through for, for the 240 volt electrical that's got to come through from the top. So we install these as we go, these pull through strings so we can pull the 240 volt cables that are going to run through here. As you go, you'll get a bit of sicker and things oozing out. It's a good idea to clean that up with a bit of mineral turps as you go. Just smooth it out. And that makes that connection a little bit better for the uh, vinyl to go over. Again, we've got to insulate through this cavity here to stop the uh, reflective heat coming in. So we, we use this um, air cell insulation. So now the walls are all lined. So we're fitting uh, Dacron insulation to the roof. You'll cut that to suit each panel and then just uh, we hold it in place with a bit of um, just painter's tape. We've got the uh, roof sheet in position, we drill and then we're going to put a uh, little countersunk rivet in. You can see it there, it's not focusing very well, but you just pop a countersink rivet in and it goes nice and flush and then we can glue our uh, sealing treatment over that, whether it's another timber veneer or stainless steel in our case, or vinyl, whatever you want, can go over the top of that as a, an adhered finish. So there we go, all lined out, and the ceiling's in. Tomorrow the electrician comes in and runs all the 240 volt cabling through the top and down in the corners. With the first fit complete, it's time to put in all the uh, final corner panels, the 45s, up on the roof line there. It's Friday Arvo and we've just finished uh, putting the last of these uh, little trims around the top, the 45 degree bits of ceiling. Clean up and go home. Start again on Monday. So that's it for this episode folks, tune in the next episode when we show you how to install the 12 volt and the 240 volt electrical.